Hello, welcome to the Institutes. This one's just kind of a fun one as we finish up chapter 21. Um, just kind of looking at the Van Allen belts, something that we talked about at the beginning of chapter 21, dealing with magnetism and how that kind of affects us. So to start off with, what I have here is pictured over here is I have a picture of the Earth. And if you notice around the Earth, what we do is we imagine that there is a little magnet on the inside of the Earth right here. And it has both a North Pole and a South Pole. Now, if you notice, it's actually backwards with what you would expect. And that's the reason for that is if you think about it, the North Pole is attracting the North Pole of other magnets. So the only way that would work is if the Earth had a giant South and North Pole where the South side was where we classify as North. Um, but in essence, what we get is we get these magnetic field lines that come out of the North Pole and the South Pole. Actually, they're going to come from the South Pole and move up to the North Pole. So there are these curves that are going around, going from this, the Earth's magnetic South Pole up to the Earth's magnetic North Pole. Now, why is that significant? Well, if you think about the sun way over here, Let's draw the sun in. Sorry about that. If we draw the sun in over here, we know that the sun is producing some kind of solar radiation. Now, the solar radiation is really mostly charged particles. And so if I imagine that coming from the sun here, I have both protons and I have electrons that are coming in, these protons, electrons are moving towards the Earth. So if I imagine that this proton, I'll start with the proton, is moving toward the Earth in this particular direction, we know, according to the right-hand rule, if that positive particle is coming in and the magnetic field is pointed upward, it's actually going to cause that particle to start rotating around the Earth in a particular fashion that's actually going to be perpendicular to both of them. So it's going to cause the particle to actually start moving that way. So if I come in, the magnetic field is up. It's going to be into the paper. So it's going to be away from you. It's going to go around. As it does that, it's going to be moving um, in such a fashion that it's with that particular thing. And this actually causes a this particle to orbit the Earth around so this side you'll actually have it coming toward you and then come toward and we're going to get this little orbit around in this particular direction these negative particles over here that are coming in are going to end up doing basically the same thing when they hit this but they're going to be moving in the opposite direction so they're actually going to feel a force that would be out it's going to cause it to go in over here and be moving around. So they're, they're gonna orbit. So because of our magnetic field and the way it's oriented, these charged particles are actually being orbited around. Now this picture that I have down here, this picture is a description of the Van Allen belts themselves. And the Van Allen belts were first discovered by James Van Allen in the, the late 1950s, early 1960s, as he actually sent um, basically Geiger tubes, the things to measure radiation up in satellites that we were first kind of launching, and notices that we had these bands of radiation. And so this red band that you see right here that we're going through, so this red band, I, actually you can't see it if I point out with this, but this red band and this red band over here are actually the orbits of our particles. And thinking about it, um, we have particles that are going to orbit there. We also have some particles that are orbiting on the smaller side. So the Van Allen belts have kind of a variety of orbits. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of our satellites are not falling in those bands. So if you notice, GPS satellites are falling right about here. So they're in between the bands. Um, we have the International Space Station, which is way down here. So it's even inside of the lowest band, so it's not even close. Um, and we have actually just recently had the Van Allen probes come back 
which were studying these bands and noticing that sometimes we didn't just have two, we had more than that. There's some videos that I have that kind of point that out. Um, and because of that, we actually have studied these radiation bands and James Van Allen kind of first discovered them, so they're named after him. Now, if you notice, the bands also follow with our little magnetic fields. So there is no belt going around at the north of the South Pole up here. So the North Pole or the South Pole here, because if I have a charged particle that comes in, that happens to be traveling in this particular direction. So if it happens to come in in this direction, it's actually gonna be moving with the magnetic field. And if you remember, our force, is equal to Q V crossed with B. And so the cross product actually becomes zero if the two particles are moving with each other. In other words, moving in the same direction or opposite direction. That angle would be zero degrees. The sine of zero degrees is zero. So we actually don't get the charged particles to be deflected at the North Pole up here or the South Pole. In fact, one of the things that we find is those particles, when they come in from the sun at the north and the south pole, since those are not as much directed towards the sun, the nice thing is we get more of a deflection. They're going to come in here kind of like this. They're going to hit that and kind of scatter off. And when they do that little scattering, they actually create these cool little colored bands at the North Pole and these cool little colored bands at the South Pole called the Northern and Southern Lights. And the reason why we get the Northern Lights and the Southern Lights is these charged particles actually bouncing off of our atmosphere. And as they bounce off the atmosphere, they cause the electrons in our atmosphere to actually rise to higher energy levels and then drop back down. So just a little bit about how useful our magnetic field is to help protect us from this. It produces these radiation bands that we do have to worry about when we're going out into space. But if you notice, there are places that we can actually kind of follow through here and minimize our contact with it. If we travel kind of in this kind of direction as we travel out or we go through these little sections, we can sometimes miss a stronger amount of that particular um, radiation. And so a lot of our satellites, then when we're launching them, if we need them to go to a higher energy or a higher orbit, or if we're sending astronauts into space to go to um, the moon, or we're going to travel to Mars eventually someday. These are things that we take into account to try to minimize that radiation. Though one of the videos I posted earlier also pointed out there's other things that protect us. So just a little bit about the Van Allen belts, just as we finish up with chapter 21. Hope you enjoyed this edition of the Institute.